Hi guys. So one of my commenters, I guess probably because he hates my guts, suggested that I do a video of myself playing the ten ball ghost in a race to three. I want to make it perfectly clear that I'm not going to win a race against the 10 ball ghost or race to three. I might win a race to one every now and then. Now, it was very gracious when he said, oh, you can take ball in hand. Okay, that would certainly help. But I don't expect it to help enough. And I think I'm also supposed to comment on what's going on and stuff, which is going to make it really, really tough. Because it would upset my rhythm and break my concentration and all that. And any excuses you wanted to think of. I could come up with it, but I really don't need any excuses. Because I'm probably about a 95 to 5 underdog. I'm winning a race of three against them all ghosts. At this point in my, you know, career, that's probably about where I'm at. Now, once I do this and lose, I'm going to keep working on it. And then eventually in the future, don't know how far in the future, I'll put up one of me winning a race of three. Um, I don't know. I don't know, like, all the rules for 10 ball. The people around here, they just they just play it like nine ball. Slop counts and all that. Uh, early nines or early tens. And all. I don't think you're allowed to count early tens. And I think you have to call every shot. One of the questions that I have is, Say I have the 10 ball hanging in the jaws and like the two right next to it. Can I shoot the 10 and I understand that would spot back up, but then shoot the two because I made a shot? Or is it just because the 10 went in early that that's it? I don't get to shoot again. I have to start over. I, I don't know. I'm going to play it where it if I make the 10 early, I made a ball, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to keep shooting. I have to spot the 10 back up if it was early, but I get to keep shooting. That's the way I'm going to play it. That might not be the right way to do it. I just really don't know. I watched 10 ball, but I can't think of a time when I saw any of the people make the 10 early. I, I just can't think of anything. So this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to try to shoot and yammer and talk at the same time. I don't know much about the break. Uh, I know that the way Feder was doing it was almost head on and no English and trying to get the one ball to come back like towards this pocket in, in this area. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Now, I made a ball and a break, which is cool. I have a feeling that's going to be pretty rare for me. I don't have a cut on the one that's reasonable. Um, I'm going to end up banking the one. Another difference between playing the ghost and, like, I guess real 10 ball is a lot of the the players nowadays would turn into cowards at this point and play some kind of a safety playing the ghost you don't play safeties because well because you're playing the ghost and there no safety is good enough so because this is a bank i have to put like all my energy into making the bank but just because of where the two is, I can put a little bit of bottom left on this. Maybe come around for the two. And that's what I'm going to try here. And 100 
million percent street in on the two ball, of course. Can I shoot that and draw back 13 inches? In theory, I can do that. In theory, I can do that. I drew back plenty. Plenty, 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 plenty. 100 million percent straight in on the three. And I could shoot a stop shot and then shoot the five in the side. I really like to drift forward just a little bit. But I don't want to risk following all the way up to here. I'd like the cue ball to be in this area. So I have a slight cut into the side on the five and then the six is right there. That's what I would like. Sometimes you don't get what you like though. <clears throat> I learned that lesson when I was still a kid. I just want to try to just stun this forward just a little bit. I don't think I stunned the forward quite as much as I had hoped. Now 100 million percent straight in on the five. Are you sensing a pattern on my angles? All I'm really looking at at this point is I don't want to be jacked up over the 10 when I shoot the six. So I just want to, I can't shoot a stop shot on the five or I will be jacked up. But just draw back a little bit. I don't want to draw back to the rail and then risk leaving the cue ball on the rail after I shoot the six. I just want to just draw back, hell, two inches. Give myself a little bitty, teeny tiny angle. And what's my route from this seven to the eight going to be? If I if I had the cue ball down here in this area, I could just shoot my bottom left and go up that way. But that's not what's going to happen. The cue ball is going to be in this area, and I'm either going to shoot like a top left. Shoot the seven and follow up this way, or come around one, two, maybe three rails. That's probably what's going to happen. I'm probably going to have an angle on the seven that makes that route easier. And so that's what we do. We try to make the six. Not playing shape. I've kind of just realized, yeah, I'm going to get a shot at the seven. I don't have to do anything to play shape. I don't want to get split brain syndrome. So, I'm, okay, I'm going to get shape. Unless there's something stupid, really, really stupid, like follow up with top right and get behind an eye or something like that. I'm not going to do that. Basically, I'm, I, I realize if I make the six, I'm going to get a shot. And so that's all I'm going to do. Actually got straighter on the seven than I thought I would get. So that this route here, here, and here is not any good. I actually thought the cue I was going to end up out about here. But if you notice, the six skimmed the rail on the way in, which meant I hit the six more straight than I wanted. And now I'm back to, to my original plan, which is just follow up. Off the short rail, off the long rail, and get a shot at the eight. Um, the angle that I'm sitting here looking at, I could do this with a straight top, so that way I don't have to worry about score stuff. And not worrying about squirt is always a good thing. You know, what I would get on the 9, obviously, is how I would get shape on the, on the 10. If the cue ball was over here somewhere, then here, here, here for the 10. I feel like I'm, I'm pretty confident in that shot. But I don't want to have to work so hard to get the cue ball back over here. I'm looking at just getting the cue ball up, maybe like in this area. And then I'm cutting the 9 to my left, here, and over here. I'm not as good at that kind of shot. But every now and then, they go in. 
now that I understand that I'm going to get shaved, unless I do something completely stupid, I can go back to just make this egg. That can become my primary focus again. And I'm probably going to get 100 million percent straight in on the nine. Wow. Yep. Man, how many how many shots in the scanner have I got to be completely straight? And I am. I don't even think I can cheat the pocket without scratching. Like if I wanted to use follow, I think my only choice is to draw back. Now, well, one of my choices is to draw back. And I could, in theory, shoot a stop shot on the nine and cut the eight in here from up there. A, it's a million miles away. B, it's it, it was, it's a fairly tough cut. My other choice is to, is to draw back. The problem with that is, for me, is it becomes harder, 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 harder. It's a harder shot all the way back until I get to about here. If I just try to draw straight back, <clears throat> I have to get to about here. Or I may as well just hit a stop shot. And if I if I think about that, then a lot of times I, I would I put too much draw on. Draw all the way back, boom, boom, leave myself something stupid. So I'm still thinking about what I want to do here. If I played 10 ball all the time, I would have already just drawn the ball back. But I would have felt better about my speed control in that case. Now I don't feel super confident about my speed control. But it's still the right shot. So I didn't quite come back as far as I wanted. Um, I don't know if this shot is... Eh, it's probably a little bit easier than if I had hit a stop shot. But I still have to make it. It's still not a duck. So there's one. That's probably about all I'm going to get in a race to three. I mean, let's face it. But I'm pretty happy with it. I have to use this damn template because that's what the 10 ball players use is the, is the templates. I think 10 ball might be the the whiny crybaby game of all of them. It's about all the times I, I talk about whiny crybabies and their rules. Almost every one of those comes into play in 10 ball. Um, one that jumped to my mind that does not come into play is the no jump shot rule. That a lot of places have no jump shot rules. Heck, in 10 ball, you get so many clusters and stuff, a lot of times you have to. You had to use a jump shot. All right, so same break I tried last time. I mean, it worked. I made a ball. I got a, I got shot up to one. Let's try the same thing again. Try not to put quite so much follow on the cue ball this time around. So my understanding is if that if that 10 had gone in that playing against the ghost that I'd lost the game if the 10 had gone in. I don't know that for an absolute fact though. Maybe I'll just spot it and see if see what it oh I don't have to use the jump shot, huh? Nah. I just remembered that I was allowed to take ball in hand. And guess what? Given a choice between what a seven foot jump shot and ball in hand? I, I'm going to do the, the ball in hand thing. So. If the six wasn't where it is, I would be tempted to play shape for the two in that corner. Because I have a tendency on a shot like this to come out and get 
a million percent straight in on the two. But I've got to get back over here. So I need, I need to just make sure I get an angle on the two. And I got one by hitting the damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking about this five, which is probably going to be the end of my end of this game. It's probably going to be that five. Oh wow! I like it. I'm just going to try to just follow around and take a cut on the three. Or I could miss. That probably makes it easier. Unless, uh, I don't know, I don't have to stress out about the five anymore. So, one to one. Me versus the ghost. That's it. And what do I do with the rack? These are so stupid. I've been watching a lot of tournaments lately where they are, they're using the templates. There's been so many times where I've seen balls like on the break going around the table and get deflected by the template that's still there on the rack. It's just, This is just a horrible, terrible thing. But I guess I'm in the minority on that because everybody seems to like them. I guess that's a given when you're playing the ghost, you get to break as well. Because <laughs> if I didn't, as soon as I lose a game, that's that's it. So, that's cool. Now what? Now what? Now what? So, I don't particularly like where the three is at. Especially because the transition from the three to the four could be tough. I could possibly get down here, shoot the three with the seven, send the three over in that direction, and it might be a little bit better. That's what I'm, I'm thinking about doing that. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. Once I, once I get on the four, I'm probably in pretty good shape. Probably. I didn't get the right angle on the two, though. Darn it, David. That was my golden opportunity, wasn't it? So I do not believe I had the angle to, like, shoot this two in the side with, like, top left. And come back down here, which is where I would like to be. I'm probably going to continue to look at it and glare at it some more, though. Because I really don't like the option of shooting the three down the rail into the corner. That's what I'm going to have to do, though. I mean, luckily, the four is kind of close to the pocket. So odds are pretty good on it, at least getting a shot at the four ball if I make the three. Or I can miss the three. Darn it. Darn it. Remember how I said I was going to lose in the race to three against the ghost? Well, I wasn't lying, people. 
I'm not on the stall. I'm just playing, you know, par for my particular course, I guess. Now I'm down two to one. I can't believe it was suggested that I do this. And beyond that, I can't believe I decided, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do that. But whatever, I do want video ideas. The problem with like a rack like that, it, it's like so short, if if someone wanted to, you know, listen to my thought processes and stuff like that, I didn't really have a lot in that. That's some, but it, 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 it's over so quickly that sometimes there's just not a whole lot of thinking. So I'm down two to one here. Well, I keep making balls on the break. I can't complain about that. I don't think you're supposed to do that in 10 ball. Is that like one of the reasons that that they do 10 ball? Because it's hard, much harder to make a ball and break. I don't know. Maybe it's just because of the extra clusters and stuff. <clears throat> and I do have a cluster with that three ball, which is, which won't go there. Which won't go there, which won't go here, which won't go here, it'll go in that pocket, and it'll go in this pocket once the two is gone. So that's awesome. <clears throat> I feel like I should be I should be doing something with that three right now. Try and do something with that three right now. So that's what I'm going to do. Just try to get a little bit lucky. Shoot the one in the corner. Roll forward. Ideally, I think I would try to split the three and the seven. Get a shot at the two. And maybe have the three in the side, depending on how far it moves. Or I can hit the seven dead in the face. Well, this is going to be the end of this match, people. Because while I do have a fancy J. Hanshu jump cue, I'm not any good with it. I've got about a half ball jump here. I could probably make the jump. But because I'm worried about the cue ball making the jump and then bouncing off the table, I might not make the jump. Uh, I mean, sure, I could kick. But if I kick, to make the two, I have to hit it pretty full in the face. And I probably wouldn't get a shot at the three because the three won't go here anyway. So, it, you know, as distasteful as it sounds, doing a jump shot make the two and just try just draw back as much as I can to shoot the three in the side but I'm gonna miss the jump on the two just to be clear about that I mentioned in a video I put out last night that when I am elevated I tend to cut balls to the left more than normal more than more than I want to and being elevated for a jump shot counts as being elevated. So I'm basically aiming to hit the seven, not the seven, aiming to hit the two full in the face. And because I tend to cut things to the left, maybe, maybe that tendency will allow me to put the two in the pocket. Maybe. Yeah, I am worried about jumping the cue ball off the table here, bouncing the cue ball off the table. So I'm probably going to hit the seven on the way down, on the way up.
Remember how I said I was probably going to hit the 70? Yeah, that's what I put him. So that was his race. Was that, I mean, that wasn't exciting, was it? Nope. I mean, I seriously hope you guys can find more excitement in your lives than watching an old man with a bum arm and bad vision lose to the 10 ball ghost. I really hope so. I got hell. I'm watching some stupid dating show on TV right now. That's how bored I am. At least I found something more entertaining than watching an old man with a bum arm and wonky vision get beat by a ten ball ghost. So, but whatever. I, it was requested and I did it. And so there it is. I I am gonna keep working on it at it. And I always have cameras running when I'm down here playing, just in case I do something cool. And one of the things I could do that could be cool is when I when I win one of those races at three. So I'm gonna keep trying that. And uh when I do, when I when I do it, yeah, that's gonna be a video that I'm gonna post. Alright, that's it. I have two remotes. Did I mention that I have two remotes? I have two remotes because I'm doing the video footage in 60 frames per second. But the audio on that camera is absolute crap. Everybody has told me it's crap. So I'm getting my audio off of my older camera. And so that's why I have a remote for each camera. Just in case you all are wondering. So that's what we have to do here. Alright. Thanks guys.